Hi, this is Ken at KNS Brakes in the continuing series. Uh, we have a C5 Corvette. We're going to talk the owner into running and spec Corvette here on the East Coast, hopefully. Uh, he's been doing track days of VIR, and at his last event, uh, he's running some good Hawk pads, and he cracked one of these high quality, not very good rotors all the way through, and you can see, so that rotor's done. Uh, it really isn't good. The KNS rotors actually are much better than that. That's another story, though. Anyway, this is a C5 front disc. It's done, that was the other side. Uh, and he said, okay, I'm done with uh, bad brakes on the track. So we have now a Willwood brake kit that was, uh, they've been making it for a while. They sort of designated it as the spec Corvette front brakes. The class rules, you could run something less if you like, but uh, this is kind of the max that they want. It's a six piston, six piston uh, Aero 6 caliper. Uh, it's a pretty good unit, good size. The kit comes with the BP30 race pads. Uh, that's 20 millimeters thick. Roughly the same surface area as the C5 uh, pad, but uh, much thicker. And of course, it's a much stiffer caliper assembly. It also comes with a much better two-piece brake rotor. Um, that's a 14 inch in diameter by an inch and a quarter thick. It's a curved vein disc. And we'll show you a couple of the things about it that I like. Uh, some of the hardware, pardon me. Uh, anyway, aluminum center hat, two-piece disc. You can see it's a curved vein design. Uh, this is our Spec 37 rotor. It's proven to be pretty durable. Uh, it's not a floating rotor, but I think we're okay with that. Uh, the price point here is pretty good. Uh, a couple of things. Uh, they do like you to safety wire the discs. Uh, that was a lot of fun learning how to do that. Uh, you get you can look that up. There's some videos for that. You get one of these things and, and some O32 safety wire. And yeah, it took a few practice tries, but after a few, it's not bad. So it's not too bad. Just take some time. Uh, and then there's one thing Willwood does do is uh, there's English hardware. So like in this case, that's a 12.716 uh, socket. So you want to make sure you have one of those. Uh, and then when we look at the uh, caliper hardware, uh, the nuts that hold the caliper down onto the bracket, wherever they are, they're here somewhere. These require a deep 12 point half inch. Now you could probably use a 13 and get away with it, but it does need to be a 12 point and deep to tighten that down. So you might want to make sure you have that ahead of time before you get started or you won't. Uh, we also checked on the other side. These are the typical 18 inch square setup you may have heard of. That's actually, of course, the C5 rear speed line wheel on the front of the car. That does nicely clear the brake, clear the brake kit. So uh, other than that, the tools are pretty basic. Uh, there's a couple things that Willwood does differently uh, with shims and their brake line. We'll kind of highlight that. But uh, first thing to do is to you know get the parts off the car. So let's have at it. Caliper is held on by a 21 millimeter. If you're careful, you can get this something like this back in there. Just take your time. And get this calipers all coming off. I'm not worried about taking the brake pads out first. I leave the brake line attached. I'll deal with all that later fluids once I have the caliper installed, then the new brake line hooked up. And then I can do a one shot, unhook the old line, hook up the new line. That way I kind of make a little less mess with the fluid because brake fluid's annoying. Anyway, off with the one piece disc. Make sure your hubs are relatively clean of any rust or debris, make sure so the rotor sits flat. Some caliper brackets. So, you know, I can hear myself. Willwood suggests a couple of shims for the bracket and a couple of shims potentially for the caliper. So you kind of do a test fit. I mean, the bracket's going to go on like this. And they want to move it out about two shim thicknesses. 
give you plenty here, but we need two of each. Make sure you use the same amount of shims. You don't want any cocking of the caliper whatsoever. It needs to be lined up perfectly. So whatever movement you do do to make sure the rotor is centered, use the same amount on each bolt. So the first thing we do basically is a test fit. I do like hardware all looks good. That's good 10.0 quality. So washer, I guess. They do say it's a thick shim, but I'll use it as a washer, why not? So it's gonna go like that. Bolt through, start it, piece of cake. Get to the bottom. Yeah, we'll snug these down for the moment as we test it everything. Then go easy here. Let's get it on a little bit. Double check and make sure it's getting snug. Disc on. See, there's a little bit of handling there. We put the safety wire on, but uh, you know, it's a race car. If you have a couple open ended lug nuts, it's a good idea to hold the rotor down while you make sure the spacing is good. Tighten those just to hold them. Make sure it's speeding normally. That looks good. Now into the caliper. Uh, you do install the pads from the bottom of this caliper, and you get these two pins out first. There's a little circlip in there. You can see it. It's uh, super fun to get that out of there. Hopefully, I'll do it on the first try or so. Probably not. Grab one leg and pull it, it'll come right out. So now those pins are loose. We get our nice thick, meaty race pads. And then you just push the little clip right back in there. It goes down in there pretty easy. They don't give you that little resounding click you like to have, but it's not coming in anyway. Not a fan of that, frankly. I think there's a better retention method, but no one ever uses it. All right. So now it's the only, maybe not quite as fun part of this is you do have to kind of slide the caliper over. Uh, lastly, before we do that, they also suggest two shims on each caliper stud. So we need to find those puppies. Uh, here. Here's the hardware for the caliper studs. Same deal. Uh, they got some shims and of course the jet nut and washers. Couple things. There's again, it's a 716 12 point. There's your shims and a washer. They do say to oil the threads on these a little bit. So, anyway, for now, we're going to put the shims on. Again, same thing. Make sure you probably want to have the same amount on each stud. It's kind of unusual. You know, the kit manufacturers don't really do much of that. They always seem to fit right. So, seems a bit unique there, but it is what it is. Another interesting thing I like is this bleed screws into the caliper 
You don't mess with that. You only bleed by the little tiny one. So now you got steel into steel, a little less likely to strip. It is a seven millimeter though, and whatever your bleeder bottle hose may not necessarily fit as good. So you might want to kind of look into that before you get going so you're ready to deal with that once you're working on the car. So it should slide right over good because the other side worked right. Let's find out. It's gonna find its way. And obviously that's not the case. Feels a little tight, so let's see what's going on. Yep, yep, sorry, there we go. So now we got it down. So we got a tiny bit of drag. Okay, the one way to this you should come around and look at this. This is probably how you want to figure it out. So we know the cat the road is where it's gonna be, down flush against the hub. The caliper, it's not torqued, but it's where it goes. So I can wiggle that pad, but I can't wiggle this pad. So there's a little bit of drag on the outer pad. So we want to move the caliper a little farther outboard so that we don't get that. That's not much drag. That will probably go away in all of, you know, barely any driving. But if we put one little tiny shim on there to move the caliper, we'll do three instead of two. I bet you that rotor will spin free to any drag. So we are off of there and it's kind of weird getting it off. So, if somebody could hand me a brass shim, one more, one of two of each total, there we go. So we did do two on the other side to fit perfectly. So I guess, uh, you know, that size and that's precise fit. So they, they give you lots of shims there. Pretty good. Put this by hand. Uh, missed it. On the other side, yeah, see there, right down. And I mean, it's the tiniest bit, but that's very little. Pad can move, yeah, just ever so slightly. I'm good with that. So, we're going to leave that's going to be that's it. So, now we can uh, finish the install of the bracket and caliper and then uh, go after the brake line. So, what they say to do is uh, here's the jet nuts for the caliper. These are uh, 49 foot pounds, if I recall. And then for the for the caliper bracket bolts, uh, 77 foot pounds. So you'll take one out, and they do want red Loctite on the caliper bolt, caliper bolt. So we'll remove one, put the Loctite on, snug it back down. Torque the 77, do the same at the bottom. The shim should stay where they are. Two seventy one, the permanent stuff. Four to six ounces per bolt.
repeat that for the bottom one. Caliper bracket is now on. We put the shims on the, uh, the studs as well, and the, those adjust, of course, the pad height. We can see that pad is good with the top of the rotor, so we're going to leave the two on there, and that's good to go. So we'll take these jet nuts, get a little oil on them. And when the snug goes on there to 49, was it again? 46, 45. 47. All right, that's pretty much it. We do have to do the brake lines. Uh, Wilmer lines are different. They use a pipe thread type fitting. You can see there's a little uh, 45 or 90 degree that goes into the back of the caliper. Uh, that's a pipe thread, one wrap of tape. And we want the elbow, we're gonna point it up. So then the line routes and we're gonna make sure that line doesn't touch anything. And then the only other thing to th think about is before you get started and all that, you can Four, four, 13 millimeter line wrench and an 18 holds this part so these can be stubborn at times so you want to crack that loose before you pull it out of the little bracket thing there kind of makes life easier and sometimes it's okay to do that but you see it's moving so you Hold it with the wrench on the bottom, that way you can and just want to crack it. There you go. So that's ready to go for now. We can get the line all loose, take the clip out, have the line ready to go, and then quickly unthread it, thread it into the new line. You'll lose very little fluid that way. So that's it for that. We're gonna go ahead and put that fitting in the back of the caliper, attach the brake line. Then we're going to bleed the brakes like normal and uh, go out for a test drive and take it to VIR pretty soon. Thanks for watching.